when I was a bit younger, I used to just think, well, that's, you know, I can't really, I don't want to spend £100, £150 over a weekend with, with girls. But now I don't really you know, see a problem in that, really. He said to me, if you love me, you can work for me. All the girls are crying, everybody want to go home because they're treating us like crap. We have no life, we have no feelings, we cannot see people, you cannot meet people, nothing. There's no question that there's a modern day slave industry. This is a problem in every major center in the United States, every single city. According to United Nations protocol, any time a person is recruited, harbored, moved, forced, tricked, or coerced into a paid sex act, they have been trafficked. And anyone under the age of 18 in any commercial sex act is automatically a trafficking victim as well. They come from all different parts of the world, Eastern Europe, Africa, a Dominican Republic, uh, Ecuador, Thailand, whatever. This is an issue of men who are overwhelmingly the perpetrators and overwhelmingly it's young girls who are their victims. It's absolutely about eliminating demand. For many men, it's like going to the supermarket. On my shopping list is to have sex with let's say, a white European woman. So you just roam the streets till you find this woman. You go in there, you pay, and, and you leave again. You got your product, you got your needs met, and that, that was it. That's the end of the story. As sexually graphic material becomes the cultural norm, related markets can grow. Erotic chat lines, websites and magazines, adult films and strip clubs, all multiplying at a fever pitch, and all using the same tactic to attract the buyer, reducing human beings to objects. We brand women and children as prostitutes or whores to dehumanize them. We use terms like gentleman's club without irony. And as this dehumanization becomes normal, we begin to tolerate outright criminal activity. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar industry out there that's fueling a lot of stuff that's going on. When any sexual service is bought or sold, you're describing the sex market. A market in which businesses of every stripe cater to buyers every whim. In this market, human beings are the product in demand. And this so-called product is provided to the buyer in every variety and at every opportunity. There's not a single case from my own research, nor from the government, that can show me one proof that an African girl is standing in the mirror on her own accord as a prostitute. The many networks, small and large, range from street-level pimps to organized crime bosses, operating both within their own borders and outside. And a large number of their victims are children. Yeah, I'll show you my girls, let's go. Come, come, come. If you're looking 18, you're probably gonna be 15, 16 years old. 13, 14 years old. As young as teen. was six years old. If you're going out there buying commercial sex, the likelihood is that you are buying sex from a child. No market can survive without demand for its product. Without steady profits, the sex market and its exploitation of human beings would cease. Unfortunately, the demand for commercial sex is great. Demand, fueled by the desires and whims, of the buyer. It's the average man, it's, it could be the businessman, it could be the old man, it could be the students, it could be the tourists, it's, we see everything out here, everything. They're the hardcore sex addicts and the bachelor who's just coming here to the party, every race, 
um, every social problem, every social economic group. Um, it just doesn't discriminate. Um, men are looking to have sex and you know, this is a way for them to find it. No matter how small, how large, how intimate, or how detached the purchase may be, anyone who exchanges money for a sexual service is a buyer. But what leads the buyer to this moment? Because it's not something that happens overnight where you think like, you know, let's do something else tomorrow, let's go to Amsterdam, let's visit a prostitute. There was a whole story before that. When you are brought up and your first experience with sexuality might be on the internet in, in, in these days, and there is nothing from your upbringing that tells you that that's not a good thing, where you can just go on the internet and, and watch all kind of pornography, then there is a step towards the next level. This is where visualization can become actualization, where related industries like pornography, strip clubs, and peep shows can lure the buyer to the sex market. It made me want to take it the next stage, almost, you know, not like a drug, but, you know, okay, that's okay. I didn't, you know, that was okay. Maybe, you know, I earn a bit more money, I can get something better. Many others capitalize on this demand, leading the buyer to the sex market and sharing in its profits. These are both individual and institutional facilitators. The alcohol services, which is arranged these dates, are making money. Um, the cab drivers who are possibly bringing guys to these girls or the girls to the guys are making money. People are making money off of women and children and slavery. It's money. I don't care how you want to switch it up and make it sound better that, oh, we're looking at the revenue. No. What you're doing is ruining children's lives and women's lives and making a fortune off of it. Not all businesses intentionally facilitate sex trafficking, but greater vigilance is necessary, especially where legal businesses are used as fronts for illegal activity. When the sex market is concerned, it's easy to turn a blind eye. If you open up our yellow pages, and this, those ads are $10,000 a page for six months, you'll see dozens upon dozens of full-color page ads of Asian girls in big, bold block letter that say just barely 18 and their massage therapy studios. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what that really is. In Japan, love booths provide numbered pictures of girls and streamlined internet contact so buyers can purchase whomever they choose. As buyers spend more and more money, the sex market grows, and its need for product increases. Do you like what you do? Do you like working as a prostitute? Like, it's not, no, not like. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. A lot of them think it's still a victimless crime, that these girls want to be prostitutes, that it's just two consenting adults having sex. Um, they don't realize the whole dangerous, dark part, which is, you know, recruiting, kidnapping, forcing girls into sex to make money. You can tell me that a girl from Albania in one of those villages out there thinks by herself, well, I want to go to Amsterdam. I heard you can make big business there in prostitution. We know, we all know that there are men and women involved in this whole business in order to get this girl from Albania out of the village in order to work in Amsterdam. One way victims are trafficked into the sex market is seduction. And they approach them in ways that for a girl with low self-esteem are very appealing. I'm gonna pull from my own story. I'm a survivor of trafficking, child trafficking. I was 14 years old. And the way the pimp came at me was that one, I didn't even know he was a pimp. And he came at me as a boyfriend. Yes, he was an older boyfriend, but he cared about me. I just thought he was there, he was picking me up from middle school, you know, every day, telling me how much he cared. Lover boy is a, is a man, is a boy, is a guy, who has actually one purpose in his mind, is to uh, uh, conquer, in a sense, a girl, to get a girl falling in love with him, in order to uh, brainwash her, to manipulate her, to get her so far that she becomes like a puppet in a codependent relationship with him, so he can actually force her to work in prostitution. Uh, do you have a pimp, so a man that, that manages you? I have a boyfriend, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was stuck on him, you know. So, it's just like I went with whatever he wanted me to do, you know. And eventually saying, you know what, I'm going to need you to go out on the streets tonight and make us some money because we don't have any other options. That's, that's the type of 
Um, that's the type of uh, process that often happens to go from a relationship that seems loving and wonderful for the child to one that becomes a living nightmare. There is this lasting effect on them, the sense of having no self-value anymore. Yes, sometimes I do feel that they did, that I'm not a person, that anybody can just hurt me and walk away. Yeah. I, I feel like a monkey in the window, like, a, yeah, not like a human, but, uh, how I say that? Yeah, animal, yeah. If my sister was to go into prostitution, I'd probably go out there and get her. There is no ends if sort of buts about it. Um, okay, hold on. It's not what, um, not for her, not for her. This is what buyers are paying for. In supporting the sex market, in making traffickers rich, the buyer is causing human suffering. It's not worth it. There is, there is nothing. I don't care if I would have to die for her. I should, should, no. No, there's nothing fascinating about it. I don't, I think about it all the time and um, I, I just don't like to think about it. I don't want to think about it. You know, I just hope she grows up and does what I didn't do and you know, have a normal life. Every dollar spent on the sex market encourages traffickers to recruit more victims. So the buyer, whether aware of this or not, is directly facilitating a criminal enterprise. In terms of the numbers, according to the U.S. government, the number of children who are at high risk, and these are American children who are at high risk for sex trafficking, that ranges for anywhere from 100,000 to 300,000 each year. And again, it's not including the numbers who've been abused and trafficked in the past. The same is true in virtually every country on Earth. We know for a fact that we're seeing at least 3,000 women and girls every year. That's one small agency. You multiply that by the number of areas we don't reach, there are probably 10 or 15,000 prostituted people. Just in this city, when you multiply this by 100 cities, you're talking about maybe even hundreds of thousands of young people who are being exploited in this way. UNICEF estimates that two million women and children are held in sexual servitude throughout the world. But there is another number, one far more disturbing, the number of buyers. The rings manage it in such a way that girls actually have to have sex with anywhere from 15 to 25 men every single day. 10, 15, 25 days. One of the primary causes of human trafficking seems clear. It happens because men buy sex. And if we could go back to who is it that is causing these young girls to be victimized, um, I would rather see the attention put there. The sex trade continues unabated due to constant demand. Uncountable numbers of human beings are enslaved and destroyed year after year so others can profit and buyers can satisfy a selfish urge. There are many ways to reduce worldwide trafficking in persons, but the most immediate is for buyers to stop buying. Without buyers, there is no sex market. Without a market, there are no victims. <laughs>